Hello, in this video, we're going to be introducing the idea of torque, torque and rotational equilibrium. So how does a thing balance, stay balanced uh, or not in a rotational sense? It's all about torque. So what is it? Here we go. Uh, torque is basically the rotational equivalent of a force. Uh, that's a good way to think of it. It's the thing that will cause rotational acceleration, just like force or a net force is the thing that will cause regular or linear acceleration. So that's what it is really. Uh, it's the thing that's gonna make rotation happen. And whenever we talk about rotation, you're gonna see this a lot, pivot or fulcrum. Because whenever we're rotating, we're rotating about or around something, some point, we call that point the pivot point or the fulcrum. So you'll see those kinds of terms. So try and just sort of picture this, you know, what would you need to do? Picture trying to make something rotate what, like, physics things do you have to do to make that happen? Well, I'm thinking you need to push it. So you need to push it, and also it matters where you do the pushing is what it comes down to. So here's your data booklet equation for how much torque a force causes. Okay, we're using the Greek letter tau here. This, uh, this guy is a you know, squiggly-looking T. Uh, that's what we're going to use for torque. Torque we measure in Newton meters, Newtons times meters, because that's what it is. We're going to multiply a force by a distance with some fun angle stuff here. All right, so in the equation, F is the force causing the torque. R is how far away your F is, really. So officially, it's this, the radial distance from the pivot point to where the force is acting. So it's how far away from the pivot point is your F, is really what R is. And theta is officially the angle between R and F. All right, so you do have to know that, uh, especially as like a data booklet knowledge thing. And you might notice there's a lot of equations like that. Work equals F, S, cosine, theta. Theta is the angle between F and S. Uh, lots of equations of this style, which have some fun vector math going on behind the scenes. The IB doesn't care about you knowing the vector math here, um, here especially because there's some fun, uh, believe it or not, three-dimensional vector math happening. So this equation officially involves some vector stuff, but we're really going to be magnitude only, and we'll talk about the direction of torque in a moment. That's how I figure out how much. So here's a little bit of the idea of torque and why we care and how we apply it. Uh, it's very useful in everyday life. If you're trying to make something rotate, like a bolt, you're trying to like screw a bolt into place, it's uh, hard to do with your fingers, yeah, to get it like really tight. Well, so we invented an amazing technology called the wrench. And what the wrench does is it lets you have a really long arm that you can exert that force at a far distance from the pivot point. Yeah, because as opposed to like trying to push or pull right here on the bolt itself, you can push the same amount way out here. And I think because we have a really big R, we cause a whole lot of torque. We cause a whole lot of rotation around this point. That's the point of a wrench, is to exert a force over a long distance. This is the basic idea of how, like, levers work. Yeah, you exert a force far away from a pivot point, and you get a lot of rotation. Uh, that's torque. This angle also matters, right? So if I, um, you're going to get the most torque if this angle is 90 degrees. And that's the theta we're talking about in the equation here. Um, definitely want to know sine of 90 degrees is 1. Sine of 0 degrees is 0. That will help you understand what's going on physics-wise with this equation. Because picture if I pushed, if I also exerted a force, but this angle was theta, so I exerted a force like this, I'm not thinking I would cause any rotation or any torque. And if this is 90 degrees, I get a lot. And if it's in the middle, I get, you know, a medium amount. Here's another picture with similar ideas. Try and open a door. This is a great, open a door is a great way to uh, understand torque. So as you go through your next couple days, every door you open, try it different ways and think about how torque is working. Um, if you push on the outside of the door, that's why we put the door handle over here because pushing on the outside of the door opposite the hinge, you have a very big R, just like with our wrench picture here. And so that's how you're gonna get the most um, rotation. So plenty of torque here, big R, uh, F is at 90 degrees. Over here, if you push on the hinge, well, nothing's going to happen, right? Because in this case, R equals zero. Your force is zero meters away from the pivot point, and so you're not going to get any rotation out of this. 
Here, if you push in the middle, you have half the R you have in B, so you get half the amount of torque. So try this, try to open a door, push on the middle. You'll notice it's, it takes a lot more force. It takes a lot more push to get it to open. Heck, try pushing like way over here, right? Try pushing on the very right, right, right next to the hinge. You'll definitely notice it takes a lot more force to get that door open, cause the same amount of rotation. So increasing R increases your torque. And again, here's an example where if the angle is zero degrees, or we could say here even is probably more like 180 degrees, the sine of 180 is zero, or the sine of zero is zero. And so the torque would be zero. So again, pushing like this on the edge of the door won't make it rotate. You know that, but here's why. It's this is why. Okay, so that's what causes torque. And just like when we have uh, you know forces, we can talk about multiple forces and how they can balance. You can have a whole bunch of different things trying to make something rotate, but they can be balanced, and that would be rotational equilibrium. So rotational equilibrium is what happens if the total torque or the net torque acting on an object is zero. So this really is just um, Newton's first law in rotation form. Remember, Newton's first law was if net force equals zero, then there's no acceleration. You're in a translational equilibrium. Well, if there's no total torque, then you won't cause any rotation. Or if something's already rotating, you won't change how it's rotating. So the one little detail we want to do is with sine stuff, because we do when we do a net thing, just like we do net force, we want like a direction to be positive and a direction to be negative, so we can add and subtract stuff together to see if we end up with zero net torque, or if we don't, how to deal with that, which we'll do soon. Uh, okay, so here's how we're going to do it. Anything that tries to make a clockwise rotation happen, let's call that positive. And anything that tries to make a counterclockwise rotation happen, let's call that negative. If you hate that, if your brain works the opposite way, uh, and you want to make counterclockwise positive and clockwise negative, go for it. It'll work. It's the same thing. Uh, just, you know, we want a convention. So that's what we're going to do. So you definitely want to sketch these. You got to be visualizing what's going on. Which way is this force trying to make the thing rotate? If it's trying to make it rotate clockwise, we'll call that a positive torque. Negative, we'll call it or counterclockwise, we'll call it a negative torque. Okay, so here's just a couple examples of equilibrium when we talk about rotational equilibrium and a good old translational. Here's one where you would have both. So here's a thing, um, some random rod, maybe it's a door or whatever, but if I'm pushing like this with two forces, one down, one up, and they're both the same size, well, the net force is definitely zero. I got an F down and an F up, and they look like they're the same size, so the total F will be zero. They're also at the same place, really. Uh, one is trying to cause a clockwise rotation, so this would be a positive torque, whereas the other one is trying to cause a counterclockwise rotation, so that would be a negative torque. Well, if it's the same F and they're happening at the same place, then R will be the same as well. So these are causing the same amount of torque, and this thing won't rotate or do anything. It'll be in both rotational and translational equilibrium. But you can have one without the other. Here's an example of something that would only be in translational equilibrium. Just picture what would happen if these two forces were happening. This thing would definitely spin around, yeah? I think it would spin around its center. If I pushed up on one side and down on the other side, Right, so for this force here, I would end up with, let's do this, I would end up with a torque that's trying to make this thing rotate clockwise. Yeah, and the size of the torque would be the size of uh, R times the size of F. So R, you know, would be this distance here. So it's how far away we are from the point uh, where we're rotating. So this would be R. I'd multiply this by F, the angle is 90, as it often is, so I'm not going to bother with the sine and 90 part. So this will cause a R times F size torque trying to make it rotate clockwise. Looking at this guy over here, I think we'll also try to make it rotate clockwise if we're pushing down on the right side. Right? I can kind of picture that this thing's also trying to spin it in the same way. So I also have a positive or clockwise torque of R times F. So the net torque here would be two times R times F. So I do have some total torque, right? Uh, so this thing would rotate around, but officially it would still be in translational equilibrium. 
the net force is zero because there's one F down and one F up. This thing is not accelerating. Like A does equal zero here because it's not, it's spinning around, but it's also staying in place in a um, big picture sense. We would officially, if we're dealing with F equals MA, treat this as a point mass. Or in other words, if you like, we're just tracking what's happening with the center of mass. And this point will not move. And so this whole, like if this is just, you know, a bar or something floating in space, it's going to spin around and around and around, but it's not going to change where it is in a like straight line kind of sense. Yeah, so the center of mass stays where it is. The object is a point mass, isn't moving, uh, not accelerating. So that's F equals MA says A equals zero, but there is a net torque. And here's one with the opposite. This case is definitely, there is a net force up. So this thing is gonna accelerate up, but because I have this thing trying to make a positive or clockwise torque, and this one trying to make a negative or counterclockwise torque, again, same size F, and they're the same distance from like, you know, some point like this, uh, there's gonna be no rotation caused. So there you go. Uh, no net torque, yes, net force. Uh, and so on. So those are the ideas of translational and rotational equilibrium. So let's try just one problem to see how this works. Uh, here we have a seesaw, and on the seesaw is a brick or something, five kilogram brick pushing down on the right side of the seesaw. We've got some supports here holding it in place for the moment, but in a second, uh, this is a little simulation that you can play with, we'll remove them. We'll remove those supports and see what kind of happens. I'm thinking if nothing else happened, this thing, you know, the right side would fall down, the left side would go up, and uh, that would be that. So what we have, though, is we have a 20 kilogram mass, and I want to do something with my 20 kilogram mass. I want to put it somewhere here on this seesaw so that it doesn't rotate. Where would I put it? Well, I think... I think it makes sense to me that I'm definitely gonna put it somewhere over here on the left side because um, the five kilogram little brick is trying to make this thing rotate oh, clockwise. So I think I need to have some kind of counterclockwise torque to oppose that to keep this thing balanced. So also just the way balancing works is really what we're talking about. I think it makes sense that this has to go somewhere over here. But it's a different size of mass, so probably not at the same spot. I think also makes sense to me that if I put the big mass over here at the same place, like at two meters on this side, I think it would fall down to the left. So it's got to be somewhere in the middle. Okay, um, there's kind of different levels of doing this. Ideally, with practice, you want to get to a point, at least let's say like this, where you can do this. You can just look at this equation and be like, oh, half a meter. Uh, all right, so so here's how you can kind of think through that in a ratio way. Um, the 20 kilogram block is four times the mass of the five kilogram block. And so, because we're gonna be doing some uh, force stuff, I think the force due to gravity is also five times more. So this guy has four times the force uh, that it can exert on the seesaw. And so for this to be the same, because I'm going to need two equal but opposite torques, if you want to think of it that way, the counterclockwise and the clockwise torque have to add to zero. They have to balance. So for them to be the same size, I'm thinking if I got four times the F, I'm going to want a quarter of the R for this to work out to be the same size. I think I'm going to put it here. Two divided by four. Anyway, that's a very quick way of doing it. If that makes any sense to you, fantastic. But uh, if not, it will come with practice and thinking about the math you are doing. Let's look at how you would actually do the math for this. So, all right, this side, I want to first, let's find the torque that we actually have that we're dealing with. I have a five kilogram block over here. Well, what force are we talking about like this? I'm thinking that's definitely the gravitational force. Right, it's the force due to gravity on the block that's pushing down this way. Force due to gravity, we know definitely, you wanna be very comfortable at this point that we use little m times g, so five kilograms times, we'll be a little lazy and use 10 meters per second squared. Uh, for round numbers for this example, so that's 50 newtons. 50 newtons is the force that this block is pushing down on over here with. So the torque would be 
my r two meters times the force of 50 newtons times we're going to drop this because that is definitely a 90 degree angle between r which would be a line from here to here and f right the angle between those two when i draw it is 90. that's often the case because that's how you get the most torque so a lot of times this just turns into a one so anyway this all equals 100 newton meters and this is trying to cause a clockwise rotation. So I'm going to call it positive. So I think the idea is now I want to put my 20 kilogram mass somewhere over here so that I get a torque like this. And I want a torque of negative 100 Newton meters. In other words, 100 Newton meters counterclockwise. Yeah, I need the same amount of torque for this thing to be in rotational equilibrium. So I want, really what I want is this one to be 100 also. Uh, I'm just talking absolute value here because the sign just comes from us looking at the picture. So officially I'm doing this, the absolute value of that torque, the size of the torque, because I just care about where do I put it. Well, what's the F I'm talking about here? Because I know this is going to be F times R. I'm going to keep the angle is 90 degrees, so I'm going to skip the sine of theta part. So I want F times R to equal 100 again. And what's F if I got 20 kilograms? Well, F will be M times G, 20 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared. That's the weight of the block, which is gonna be the force that it exerts on the left side of the seesaw, which is 200 Newtons. So because in this case, with the 20 kilogram block, the force is 200 Newtons, I can multiply that by my new R and I should get a size of 100. So R is 100 Newton meters over 200 Newtons. And so it is, in fact, one half or 0.5 meters. That's where I put it. So I'll put this 20 kilogram block right here at the 0.5 meter point, And I'm thinking I should see a balanced seesaw. Uh, so this is from a FET sim. So I encourage you to go try it. Go try it and play with that sim. And you will see this actually work. Um, yeah, because that's how rotational equilibrium works. So there you go. Torque depends on R and F. And if the total torque is zero, you get no rotation or no change in your rotation. Uh, there you go. That's your intro to torque. We'll do some practice together. Uh, have fun.